Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us Amit Goyal, Director of Product Management at NVIDIA. And today we are going to talk about uh, uh, NVIDIA's uh, new board. But before we get into that, first of all, Amit, welcome to the show. Thanks, for it. We used to talk about, hey, you should have a digital transformation journey. Every company should be a software company. Then we started talking about every company should have a cloud strategy. But when you look at today's world, it seems that every company should also have an AI ML strategy because it's playing a very critical role in your IT stack. Whether you're consuming cloud, you have your own data center, uh, AI ML, whether it's security, whatever you are doing, AI ML is there. So I want to ask from you, what role do you think AI ML is going to play in modern infrastructure or cloud? It doesn't matter whatever you are doing, whatever a company is doing, where does AI ML fit in? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you ask any company today, AI and ML is a part of their core strategy. Uh, and the big reason for that is, uh, as we know, software is, everything is becoming software defined. And, and AI and machine learning is the new way to write software. And as CEO likes to say, it's the way to uh, automate the automation, right? So that is what is, enables people to deploy solutions uh, at speeds that was that is not possible if people are actually writing every software. So it's primarily an offshoot of the fact that everything is becoming software defined. And now AI and machine learning is the new way to write the software. If you look at NVIDIA and if you look at this uh, Jetson uh, Nano board, what role is this th this initiative playing in NVIDIA, NVIDIA's larger AI ML strategy? In the future, uh, we expect that everybody is going to be programming with AI, right? People started learning in schools and colleges programming and Python, but going forward, people will not be programming computers. Everything is going to have the capability to run AI. And so everybody would be programming robots. So with Tits and Nano, uh, what we have done, what we've done is we are bringing that ability and the, to learn AI, to do hands-on AI down to a level where everybody can do it. You know, whether you are a high school student, whether you are in university, you can you have access to the technology, you have access to the tools, and you can start your AI journey because that is the way things are going to be programmed in the future. When we do talk about a lot of AI ML frameworks or platforms, access to those platforms also a big play a big role in being able to play with it, being able to write for it, being able to develop things against it. So does, is that also part of the strategy to, to put this hardware, to put this platform in hands of developer so they can you know, play with it as well, so that they can target it as a platform? Yes, that, that's absolutely right. So one of the biggest uh, challenges of AI is that it's moving really fast. The, the software tools that are available for it are moving really fast. And what we have done is we are, NVIDIA is investing billions of dollars in this. We have been working on this for over 10 plus years. And with, with the Jets Nano, we are, what we are doing is we are bringing the same tools and the same software that is used by researchers in the big companies and data scientists. We are bringing all of those same tools now to a maker or a student sitting at home. And so leveraging uh, our one architecture, uh, GPU architecture, we are able to bring that billions of dollars of software investment now to the developers uh, and make it really accessible. So everything you learn here is very practical. It's, uh, it's something that you can actually use uh, when you go to work. And so thanks to our big ecosystem around AI, every framework, every new model, every new architecture that is comes out will be supported. So you are not limited in what you can do with the Jetson. How different is it from Raspberry Pi? Because you know there are a lot of inexpensive uh, boards out there. At the same time, when you mentioned, you know, uh, as technology grows up, so what is the shelf life of you know, Nanos? All of our products are, you know, what we call software defined. And uh, the capabilities of these products keep evolving. If you look at, uh, you know, the first product uh, that we announced with Jetson was TK1 followed by the TX1. And we are still supporting that product. And uh, we can still doing software updates. And somebody who got a TX1 back in 2016, they can download all the latest software and run on it and actually get more performance. 
So uh, we, you know, we like to say we support every platform as long as Nvidia shall live. But but we we thanks to our you know again one architecture, we are able to keep improving these products over time. Um, you asked about the comparison with other boards and Raspberry Pis. There are, there are two fundamental differences uh, between you know the other uh, computers out there and the Jetson Nano. Uh, the first one is performance. So the Jetson Nano has a built-in uh, CUDA-enabled GPU that can do half a trillion operations per second of performance, uh, which is you know up to 100x uh, performance compared to a Raspberry Pi for AI uh, applications. And the second thing is the software stack. As I mentioned, we have brought billions of dollars worth of investment made software now available to at $59 to developers. Uh, the ecosystem that of software that is available on the NVIDIA platform uh, for AI and machine learning is unparalleled. There is nothing else that can even come close to it. And beyond these two differences, there's a lot of similarities which allows people to actually uh, you know, transition after they're done learning on Raspberry Pi, they can easily transition. So it's similar in a lot of ways to a Raspberry Pi that has the same Linux computer, it has a small form factor, it's easily accessible, and it has all the IOs you need to connect your motors, drivers, you know, build, build small uh, projects. Since we are talking about Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, of course, you can use a board. It can be used by enthusiasts, and, but then they also are being used even by enterprise customers. So uh, uh, is there also a variant of Jetson that is seen as a product, not just a platform for researchers, developers, or students? Absolutely. And in fact, uh, all of our Jetson uh, products uh, prior to the Jetson Nano 2GB uh, they had a, a, a commercial version of it also available that, that is being used by a lot of companies to build solutions for robotics, for video analytics, healthcare, agriculture, just a lot of them. And again, because we have designed it in a way that any development, anything that you develop using our developer kit, you can take your software application identically onto your actual product. So any any development work that you do with the kit directly translates to the development that you want to do for the product. So we have uh, we sell system and modules, uh, which uh, and the customers can build their own uh, systems around it, expose the IOs that they want, create a box that is ruggedized or depending on their application. So lots of our customers are actually uh, starting their journey with a developer kit, getting experience of what it can do, and then buying our commercial version of it to go build products. So it's very kind of you know smooth transitions. Uh, looking at is a, develop, a developer platform as a less you know deployment or production platform. Uh, now one thing more that I want to discuss with you is uh, there's an explosion in, in the space of edge computing. You know a lot of work is being done. Uh, what potential do you see for off, not only potential, but what are the, because you are much more aware of these use cases than we are. So talk a bit about what kind of use cases that you are either excited about or you are seeing a lot of take, especially from the context of this board. One of the biggest thing, you know, that we are all living through right now is this pandemic, right? It has uh, illustrated a need for new kind of capabilities of observing and monitoring uh, for safety of people. So we, uh, and, and also for diagnosis uh, and you, in healthcare. So we've seen a lot of uh, need for uh, companies to deploy solutions where they can track if people are wearing masks or not, if they're uh, practicing social distancing or not. If somebody's coming into your office, uh, you want to, scan them for uh, to see if they are they have an elevated temp body temperature what surfaces did they touch so you can send up somebody to go and clean them so all of this if you thought about doing this using a standard programming interface there is no way you would have a product that can be deployed but uh, we are seeing that within the months uh, companies have developed algorithms and uh, to run these solutions and of of course, all of this has to be done on the edge. You know, you cannot be streaming uh, the video from uh, from your office to uh, to the cloud servers twenty four seven. That just the economics doesn't work out, and there's no way you can connect these millions and billions of cameras to the 
cloud. So you need to, and for privacy reasons also, you want to do it right there on the edge. All you want to know is, well, is this person having an elevated temperature? What surface did he touch? And is he wearing the PPE or not? So definitely a big area that we are seeing adoption. Uh, the second is robotics. You know, the need for automation has increased more than ever now. We have to, uh, we want people to be able to operate things sitting remotely. We want things to be automated, whether it's delivery, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's inspection. So another area, again, where we're seeing a lot of need for edge computing, because all, all of these things have to be moving, all of these things have to be an environment where you really need edge computing. Now, I do know that you cannot talk about specifics, but if you look at the, the product roadmap for Nano, what are the areas that you, for the, hey, these are the areas we'll be making improvement, enhancement, or feature. As I said, we're not talking about you know, what to accept, but just few areas that you want to further improve when we look at this uh, board. Yeah, so uh, one of the things with AI is that its complexity and its ability continues to evolve. Uh, you know, within the last uh, five years, if you see the model complexity has increased hundredfold. So it's in, in, inevitable that the models and the algorithms of AI algorithms of the future will need more compute than what is possible uh, with Nano today. So that, that's one area where we can we'll definitely continue to invest, bringing in more performance, more capabilities uh, to the developers so they can run uh, you know, the latest and the greatest uh, technology that is available. Uh, the second area where we want to continue investing is, again, making it more uh, accessible and, uh, and creating content that makes it easy for people to learn. Uh, with Jetson Nano 2GB, we launched our certification program. It's completely free content that, that people can go and take those courses at their own pace and start learning about AI. So it's, an, it's a pretty good course, completely freely available. People can do on their own pace. So we plan to continue creating that content uh, either through ourselves or working with our community to make that content available. So, so the barrier to uh, entry and the resources available for learning continue to increase. Of course, the NVIDIA offers a lot of resources, but if you can just point towards some of the resources which are there available for uh, developers or whoever gets wants to get started with, with it or to get started with AI in general, talk about those resources that you're offering. There are two uh, resources that I would like to highlight here. Uh, the first is the Deep Learning Institute. Uh, as I mentioned, with, within the Deep Learning Institute, we have a lot of courses that developers can go and uh, take a take and learn about AI. For uh, with Jetson Nano, we introduced a new course uh, that allows you to uh, get a Jetson Nano board, a camera, and get started learning with AI. And it goes from starting with the basics of what AI uh, and takes you all the way to actually building a project where you can uh, control a small robot or you can build your own smart doorbell. The limits are uh, endless. So we have the complete curriculum available. Uh, the second resource I would like to highlight is our projects page. So we have over 700,000 developers uh, who are registered uh, developers for our autonomous machines and Jetson uh, platform. And these people are making some really amazing stuff and putting it there for the community to learn. So we work with our, uh, our these influencers and our developers and we create a curated list of projects that are uh, listed on the NVIDIA Jetson projects page. These are open source projects that anybody can uh, follow the steps and get started with. So those are the two key resources that are very useful for anybody who is new and who wants to just get started with AI and Jetson. Amit, thank you so much for taking time out from your busy schedule and talk about not only uh, just a nano board, but also uh, how AI is going to play a very critical role in the the company's you know, strategy and how NVIDIA is trying to kind of you know democratize AI ML for everybody. So once again, thank you for your time, and I look forward to talk to you again. Thanks, Wapner.